Bruce, I'd like to, to have your take on the Indonesian economy. Growth has been pretty tepid despite all efforts to, you know, boost GDP. What's gone wrong? I think I think growth is looking good this year. I think the prospect is looking good. Uh, the president, as you Nowhere know... Nowhere close to 7% that Jokowi was looking at when he first started as president. Uh, not yet. But this week, the president is submitting to parliament uh, the omnibus law, which is, uh, which, which is trying to streamline about 79 different laws and about a th over 1,000 different clauses. It covers labor reform, tax reform, investment reform. And the goal is to create enough jobs for the 7 million unemployed plus the 2 million uh, new entrants uh, that come into the workforce every year. So for that to happen, growth must go from the current 5% to 6%. So, so you're if we saying can do this, that. So you're saying this honor buzz law is going to be a game changer for Indonesia. So, I think so. so. I think so. Create more jobs and when will we see that 7% growth? I, th I think that's a question better <laughs> asked for our ministers. But I think Indonesia is one of the few countries today where you're seeing growth. Um, and yes, I think we for for many years Indonesia tried to achieve 7, but you know, we are living in a slower growth environment generally. So I think five, six, six and a half percent would be excellent for Indonesia. And especially also with the backdrop of inflation continuing to come down. Inflation last year was below three percent, so very healthy. Um, so the, the macro situation in Indonesia and the outlook for 2020 is very bright. For Lipo Karawachi and the Lipo Group in general, where do you see the opportunities? How are you seizing these opportunities? I think we're very excited. I think the momentum uh, that Indonesia has is, is, is perfect uh, for the businesses that we're in. I think real estate will benefit immensely um, from the infrastructure that the president has rolled out over the last five years. Finally, in the last two quarters of 2019, we're beginning to see a very sustained and strong pickup. Um, in, 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 in uh, purchases of homes, uh, also in our healthcare business. Uh, that's also another business that has done very well. Uh, Siloam last year, uh, our EBITDA grew uh, by uh, almost 30%, and I think this year we're going to continue to build on that. So whether it's, uh, whether it's real estate, healthcare, our malls, um, I'm, I'm very excited for 2020. So pretty excited. How excited are you about the move to move the capital? I mean, do you see opportunities there? Definitely. I think uh, the move uh, of the capital city to Kalimantan is another uh, landmark policy uh, that, that, that the president uh, is, is running on. Um, I think that will uh, boost uh, investment uh, and, and capital spending and also help to spread out uh, the growth away from Java um, and also in, in, in that regard uh, 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 address some of the issues of inequality uh, of growth. Uh, you have a cooperation with SoftBank. Do you see that cooperation perhaps materializing in the new capital in terms of new projects? We're doing a lot. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that uh, developers must think more like consumer companies. So we have to think more about the customer journey, uh, think more about uh, the customer experience. And, doing, and, and to do so, I think technology is an important part of it. So our partnership with SoftBank uh, is to apply a lot of the artificial intelligence, the big data technologies, into our township, townships and our developments. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and I hope uh, we'll have that opportunity to do so in the new capital as well. You know, John, you talk about the opportunities in Indonesia, but when it comes to foreign investors, they, they see the policies in Indonesia being a bit more nationalistic. It's like taking a step forward and two steps back, and they're pretty uh, uncertain if that is the market they want to be putting the money in. Your take on that? I think that's a fair. I think that that's a fair assessment, and one one that the government acknowledges. And so you'll see in the bill that's being submitted to Parliament this week, uh, the government I think is taking concrete actions to address. Uh, the concerns of many foreign investors, whether it's permitting, whether it's setting up businesses, whether it's land clearance issues, you know, across the board, foreign, uh, ne the negative list on foreign direct investment. Um, I think uh, you'll see that the, that the government is serious uh, about uh, reforming and attracting uh, foreign direct investment. And the biggest risk in 2020 for businesses like Lipo? There's always a lot of risk. Uh, globally, I think, um, in, in uh, the, the trade war, uh, and some of the geopolitical tensions in the region. Uh, but uh, look, you know, I think we live in a complicated world. The, the good thing is I think Indonesia is fundamentally a, a, a solid and attractive growth story. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll roll with the punches as, as the challenges come. <laughs>